last time Alabama entered the Iron Bowl with two losses was way back in 2010. And it was an all timer with Cam Newton leading Auburn back from 24 down on their way to a national title. That's also the last time Auburn won in Tuscaloosa. And they've fired three head coaches since. Gene Chizik, Gus Malzahn, and now Brian Harson, who was let go after a 3-5 and five start this season. Former Tiger great Cadillac Williams was named interim head coach, thought of only as a placeholder. But who knows what could change if he leads the Tigers to a win over the Tide. We are going to play football, Auburn football. And whether that's Dallas Cowboys, University of Alabama, a great Nick Saban, many kids not going to blink. We not blinking. Interim, inexperienced coach on one side and the greatest of all time on the other. Nick Saban won his first national title when Cadillac was starring in the Auburn backfield. Saban has won six more with Alabama, but after 15 years, there's now some uncertainty about whether the dynasty and the dominance might be coming to an end. Saban is under contract through 2030, but he'll be losing two of the top players in college football. Bryce Young and Will Anderson playing their final game at Bryant-Denny Stadium and perhaps their final college game period with opt-outs looming for a likely non-playoff bowl game. This is one of the biggest ones and it means a lot to a lot of people in our state. It means a lot to us, our players and our fans and we're going to do the best job we can to get ready for this game. It might not have SEC or playoff implications, but it's still the Iron Bowl. And it's on CBS. Coming up at 3.30 p.m. Eastern, it's the SEC on CBS. It's the Iron Bowl. Auburn versus Alabama from Bryant-Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa. We'll also see if the Horned Frogs can overcome a cyclone on their way to the Big 12 championship game. It's Iowa State and TCU. And out west, it's the Civil War. Oregon and Oregon State, a top 25 matchup in Corvallis. Russ Thaler back here in studio, joined by two-time Super Bowl champ Bryant McFadden and college, uh, CBS College Sports, uh, CBS Sports, sorry, college football writer Chip Patterson, host of the Cover Three podcast. Gentlemen, let's begin with the Iron Bowl. Uh, it hasn't been the season we necessarily expected from the Crimson Tide, but Auburn, Auburn's in a whole different spectrum of futility at the moment. Then again, the Tide are 0-3 against the spread in their last three games, while the Tigers are 3-0 and against the spread under Cadillac Williams. Chip, which Tide are you rolling with today, the Crimson or the Trend? I'm going with the Crimson Tide here. I know it's a massive number. I know it's an unfavorable number at just a tick over three touchdowns. However, I think that Bryce Young, playing in what is likely going to be his final game at Bryant-Denny Stadium, doesn't want to go out like that. And I think that Will Anderson, somebody who is also likely playing in his final game at Bryant-Denny Stadium, does not want to go out like that either. And we can create all these nice fairy tales about Auburn going in and shocking the world here, but I think it is far more likely that the inevitability of Alabama, something that we haven't talked about a lot in the last two years, but something that was a trend for a long time during this Nick Saban run, I think that that starts to show up. It might not be the flashiest win. It might be one that's led by defense. But I think over the course of four quarters, a one-dimensional Auburn offense is not going to be able to score enough points to be able to keep up with Bryce Young, who remains among the most talented quarterbacks in the entire sport. So I, I think that 22 is begging you to take the Tigers. It's begging you to jump on the fairy tale. I, I'm going to say that, uh, that I am telling you that I am midnight and you are turning into a pumpkin. I'm laying it with the Tigers. Well, I'm on, the, I'm on the opposite side of the field, Chip, and I, I agree with all your points. I don't, I won't be surprised to see Bryce Young put up Heisman-like numbers. I won't, I wouldn't be surprised to see Will Anderson and the defense just dominate. But one thing that I, I, I realized since Cadillac Williams has become the head coach there for Auburn, they've become a second-half team. They've become a fourth-quarter team, a team that will fight for four quarters. So, yes, it might be a fast start for the, for the Crimson Tide. They might dominate for a half. They might dominate into the third quarter. But when you look at Auburn and the energy that they have been playing with and just the fight and just being able to keep going until the whistle blows, I think a backdoor cover is the ideal mark for 
the Auburn Tigers. And because of that, I'm rolling with the Tigers. War Eagle, I'm rolling with the War Eagle. Robbie Ashford, you don't need to win the ball game. Just play smart sound football. Rely on guys like Tank Bisby, uh, Bigsby and Jacquez Hunter. Those two guys can really do big time damage offensively in running the football and then make timely plays through the air when you need to. But you talk about 22 points. Yes, 22 points. I think that's more than doable for Auburn in being able to cover this spread. And hopefully there's a few miscues from Alabama like we've seen in weeks past as well. So give me the inspired team that has a lot at stake when you talk about this rivalry. Give me the team that's already coming into this ballgame with no hope at all. Just <laughs> finding a way to cover from the back door. And usually those back door covers are the best ones. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.